This is the Feast of the Ascension. In the early church, this feast was celebrated as part of the Feast of Pentecost. It was one feast. Many of the feasts that we celebrate today were originally part of the festal celebration of a larger feast. For example, the Feast of Nativity, of which we've spoken in the past, the feast or called Christmas here in the West, in the United States. That feast was historically, the, the celebration of the birth of Jesus was part of the Feast of Theophany, the baptism of Jesus. We've talked about that before. Here, in a similar manner, the Feast of Ascension was part of the celebration of the Feast of Pentecost. And so to understand the Feast of Ascension, we really have to understand what Pentecost was all about. But I don't want to take uh, any of the material from our Pentecost celebration and sermon, so we will restrict it as much as we can. The Feast of Ascension is the taking up of a human body, our flesh, into the heavenly realm. When we left the Garden of Eden, the human body left the presence of God. But that was not God's original plan. God's original plan was to dwell with man here on earth while man had his human body in the Garden of Eden for all eternity so that God and man would be one as a father and son or parent and child, like a family. You know the tragic story of what happened in the garden and how man abandoned his filial inheritance and was banished from the garden as a result of that. But what loving father would allow his child to leave the home without having a plan to bring him back? And this is what the Feast of the Nativity or the Incarnation of our Lord is all about and what the Feast of the Ascension is all about, like bookends on the earthly ministry of our Lord. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. Because this was His plan for God to dwell with man. And Jesus walked this earth. He died and He rose from the dead. But that's not the end of the story. We might often think, wouldn't it have been nice if Jesus could have stayed around? Why didn't He just stay here after His resurrection? Well, He did, and we'll talk about that later. But He ascended. He took a human body back into the dwelling place of God. And now we have the fullness of the restoration then of God's original plan that God has now become man and through His ascension, taking that human body, that flesh, He has now ascended to the place from which He came and now Jesus Christ, the Son of God from all eternity, with a human body, dwells in the heavenly realm. You might say, well, that's nice for Jesus, but what about me? I guess I have to wait till He comes back. Well, then we've missed the whole point of the sacramental celebration of the church. All of you who have been baptized into Christ have died with Him, been buried with Him, and risen with Him, raised to newness of life. You have been recreated, drawn from the murky waters of the creation. Like Adam of old, you have come forth now from the pristine waters of the baptismal font. You have had the breath of life blown into your nostrils again through chrismation and you have received His body and blood, the fruit of the tree of life in the Garden of Eden. Consuming the flesh and blood of Jesus brings about your physical resurrection at the end of time. We spoke much about this during Pascha. But why now does Jesus ascend? 
Jesus ascends into the heavenly realm and takes that human body with Him. And why is that important for us? What does that mean for us? We who have been baptized into Christ, St. Paul says, Galatians 3.27, have put on Christ like a garment. Where Jesus is, you are now. This is why St. Paul says in his epistle to the Hebrews, we now stand before the throne of mercy. We now stand in the dwelling place of God. We now stand before our Heavenly Father. In fact, we are seated on His very throne by being members, parts of the body of Jesus Christ. Now, when the church says we are members of the body of Christ, it doesn't mean symbolically or kind of as an analogy. No, we are members of the body of Christ in all reality. And so when someone asks, it's too bad, you know, why didn't Jesus stick around? Well, He did. Look in the mirror. You are the body of Christ on earth. And this is why we continue to gather every celebration, every Eucharistic celebration on Sundays and feast days. We continue to renew and are reminded of what we received in our initiation in the church, in our baptism, chrismation, and Eucharist. We are rejuvenated, restored, and reinvigorated to do what we are called to do, and that is to be the body of Christ here on earth. We are to be the body of Christ here on earth. So if you ever wonder, I wish Jesus was around, look in the mirror and realize your calling to your family, to your neighborhood, to your workplace. Someone will say, a Christian will say, oh, I wish Jesus would come back. Absolutely. I, I, I pray for His return. But let's look in the mirror and realize what we are to do from now until He returns. We are to go out and preach the Gospel. Preach the good news. Preach, as He said, baptism, chrismation, and Eucharist. Bringing all of the nations into the body of Christ so that Adam and all of his descendants, so that all of the human race can be saved. Will all be saved? No. But we do know that God desires the salvation of all men. And therefore, we are required to go out and share the body and blood of Jesus Christ in which we participate. Share His words which we hear every time we gather with the world out there. We are the body of Christ here on earth and we are members of His body, therefore, in the heavenly realm. Remember that when you pray. Remember that when you pray. And let us continue our prayer today as the early Christians did, facing east in Jerusalem, looking to the Mount of Olives, waiting for His return from the east and celebrating continually until that time what He has given us here on earth. Glory be to Jesus Christ.